All right, so what we've got here is a um, Audi, a small Audi engine cover uh, that wants finishing in the same pattern that it has already been done in. Um, obviously, just fixing this particular area. Um, so we're going to do the entire thing again. So what I've what I've already done, um, being as this is a start to finish video, I've already gone over it with some 180, and I've I've uh, done that with a a mini orbital sander. Um, now, if you haven't got one of those, you'd have to do it by hand. So we can start with some 180. Then what we're going to do, we'll do the rest by hand. So in here we've got some uh, normal water and some washing up liquid. We've got some 400 gram flat. Now, you can start with the uh, you can start with 320, 400. It doesn't make much difference the the 80 variant what I'm doing is just gonna so we'll start sanding that now and we'll sand the entire panel sand the entire panel in 400 so what you want to do is you start at one side finish at the other or just go over it until you're happy Try not to go through to the uh, base if possible, unless you really want to strip the entire thing back. On this, it's not necessary. It's not got much paint on. But essentially, what what I'm trying to do is here where the where the paint and the original plastic obviously meet. We want a very smooth edge. We don't want to feel like if I pull my fingernail across, it shouldn't get caught. All right, so it shouldn't it shouldn't get caught anywhere. Um, if it starts getting caught, you've got it's not smooth enough, you need to sand it down some more. So after we've used the 400, go over the entire thing with 400 until it's nice and smooth, and then we'll pull out some uh, we'll pull out some 600 and just go over it again for a couple of minutes uh, before we progress on to the next step. So um, once I've done that, I'll do the next step. A little note I'd like to add is, I've done my 400, I've gone over the entire thing with 600, so it's nice and smooth now. Something to worth mentioning is, is if you're getting a little, like where it's starting to drag with your fingernail, as you can see, plastic here, you've got paint there. So you, a bit where it joins is, is this area, all right? So you want to sand against, against the grain. So for this, left and right, left and right. For this bit here, obviously you've got paint there, you've got the uh, plastic here, you want to sand up and down, so you're sanding against against the join. Start sanding side to side on that particular bit, it's not really going to be as effective, whereas if you sand up and, sorry about the focus, if you sand up and down against it, you're going to get more effect um, against the grain and where it joins. Right. So now we've now we've done that. We've sanded the entire thing. Um, as you can see, on this bit, there's no need for me to sand all the way through. Uh, I've just sanded so that I've gone into into the original lacquer coating, and it's obviously got something for the new paint to grip to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sponge that down and rinse it off with clean water, then leave that to dry. All right, so it's been uh, rinsed down. Use the sponge to get into uh, any corners, any creases, like especially around the writing, etc. Uh, and then rinse, rinse with a nice clean cold water. It's been left to dry. Uh, now, if you've if you've got in a bit of a rush and you've dried it with a cloth, it's a good idea to use a, a general degreaser with a clean cloth. You can get that again off eBay. Just type in degreaser, and uh, most of them should come up. Now. 
we've obviously got as described before we've got normal paint and we've got the original plastic so what we're going to use on this is a UPOL high coat plastic primer um, which is it's not absolutely required but it's better on plastic bits because it, it does promote better adhesion um, so we're going to do that over the entire panel now what we want to do is we want to spray from a good distance probably four or five inches i just want to go over after you've shaken your can up for at least two minutes so it's nice and free just want to go over nice and gent nice and gentle not too slow so it runs and just I think and then so I get a 50-50 coat remember always wear a mask Now these bits can be particularly hard in the edge where obviously where where it rolls because you, you run the risk of getting too much paint on and obviously it, it running. So if you're not if you're not confident, uh, leave it to dry or leave it to almost dry and then do another coat. Obviously I'm going to do it right now. And just obviously touch up any bits you've missed. Again, you can leave it to dry. It's not with the primer. It's not essential. It's not like a lacquer. It can be. It can be applied after it's been left to dry. Okay. So finish touching off any bits. Leave it to dry. When it's dry for ten minutes, we'll put on a second coat. A second coat. Obviously, these bits that you can see. It'll have completely coated those. All right, so we've got us there. Second coat, well it's actually the third coat, I've done the second coat, uh, I forgot to film it. So, same principles as before, just straight over, nice and sharpish. Right, so we'll uh, again we'll leave that to dry now once it's done uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sand that down again with some uh, either six or eight hundred so it's nice and smooth before we dip it
Right, Steve's going to demonstrate um, a slightly different way of putting the film in the water if the film has been sat out for a while it's a little bit a little bit um, over aired if you like so it's, it's been sat there a good I think we've had it sat there for two weeks so the film's quite soft a bit too soft to be putting in a triangle and laying in on your own normally we do this with two of us but we're rep replicating if you're on your own how would you put it in so it's a bit risky but it does works 99% of the time if you do it right so uh, let's watch So he's just getting it in and he's just going to drop it on one edge and then lay it in slowly. And it's practically spot on. There's a couple of air bubbles on edge. You can see there's a couple just on edge but you're never going to go anywhere near that when you're dipping. Um, so overall it's, it's gone really well. I'll end that there. Best way to place your film, if you're doing it solo, is to cut a square of piece as you can that's going to go in your tank, get one corner, get your other corner, and essentially fold it over so you've got a triangular piece like that. And then you'll have obviously a nice triangle fold piece. Now we can take that over to his tank. Alright, so we're going to carry on from where we left off. Uh, I've changed film simply because I had to dip that and get it ready before I had a chance to do any more videos. So we've got a piece of wood film. Uh, it's in a diamond shape. What we're going to do now is we're going to lay it in, uh, in the water. So in the diamond shape, I'm going to grab the top two points of the diamond. And what we're going to do is we're just going to lay in one side slowly. And just let, kind of let the water pull it in. And as we do, we're just going to pull it apart, spread it apart nice and slow. And the water will pull the film down as you pull it apart. No air bubbles in that, which is which is great. And you can see it's rolled a little bit. That's mainly because it's old film. Obviously, if you were to use masking tape, you're not going to get that problem. So I'm going to put my bars in place. Now the, the, we might have to move the bars again depending how much it expands while it's in the water. Uh, what we're going to talk about while we wait for that is obviously you've got your activator. Now we do activator in, in two variations. We do it in an aerosol for the beginners and we do it in a one litre can which we spray out of, uh, out of an HVLP gun which is a separate video on that. Now the main difference is the amount that comes out of the gun compared to the aerosol. You can see quite a wide spray pattern, probably about seven inches wide. Um, whereas the activator aerosol spray out it's fully depressed. I'm, I'm doing it shouldn't hold it like that. Fully depressed you've got about maybe two and a half inch. Um, now due to how the activator comes out of an aerosol the amount that comes out but also other chemicals in it that obviously make it pressurise that make it spray you don't have the dipping window um, what I mean by dipping window is how long you've got once it's applied to dip the part before the film reverts to its previous state now with the gun you've got about a minute and a half two minutes if you're getting up on there with the activate you've got maybe 20-30 seconds tops and you've got to get a lot on the product will never let you down if you apply it properly 
Now this is great for beginners. If you're going to go out there and you're going to start doing it properly, invest in a compressor, invest in an HPLP gun. The gun is nine pounds off eBay. It's not expensive. Um, and you know, get the right setup. It will save you hours of misery. So that's been sat there now for a good minute. We've shaken this up. Obviously, you should be wearing a mask. I'm aware of that, but I can't talk to you if I wear a mask. So. That film's quite delicate and you can see I'm just going to put my finger straight through it. It's not a problem, I'm just going to avoid that dipping area, uh, that particular bit. I'm only dipping the speed tape for the purposes of this video. So I'm just going to tighten them up as much as I can. I don't want too much spread, that's about the maximum amount, maximum amount of spread that I want to get on something like this. So when you spray, you want your can at about that angle. If you spray like that, it's not going to come out. Spray like that, obviously you're not going to get it on your film, so really want it like that. And we're going to do three, maybe four passes with the aerosol, whereas with the gun we would only need one pass. We're spraying from about six to eight inches. Nice and steady. Obviously not too steady. But you can see it's starting to spread and you can see it's starting to turn to like a, a liquid form. Just one more for a good measure. And as soon as you've done that, soon, you should be wearing a glove as well, as soon as you've done that, you want to get your part in there and start dipping. So this is just a speed shape. If you're starting to do bigger things than the speed shape, I would really recommend, obviously, upgrading to, to to better apparatus. I mean, you could probably do something like a centre console. We have done them before, um, but really, you want to start investing in, in bigger bits. This is just the per for the purposes of the people starting out that want to want to try it. So that's gone on there, spot on. You've got wood on wood on yellow. Um, that's about all there is to say. Obviously, if you need any help, um, if you get really stuck, give us a ring. Uh, check out www.carink.co.uk or search on Facebook for Carink and you'll find us. Uh, that's all. Thank you. So actually you dip your part, um, you put it on side, now you've left it, you can leave it for anywhere from 2 minutes, uh, it doesn't matter if you leave it 10 or 20, it's not going to hurt it. Um, so saying that we've left it, what we're going to do is we're going to rinse, we're going to, we're going to rinse um, the excess off. So what you'll notice is it's still, it's still very shiny, in effect it's, it looks like it will look when it is lacquered. Uh, if you use a gloss lacquer, so that's what it's more or less that's what it's going to look like if you get a good finish. So, we're just using a shower to rinse our items. Some people have professional rinse stations, we just use a shower. We're going to start quite warm, probably about, about 120, deg uh, 120 Fahrenheit, maybe about 40 degrees. So, we're going to turn it onto the hot. You can see there's not a lot of power there. It doesn't matter whether you rinse it hot or cold, but to start with, you want to rinse it with quite a, a low power in case, just to stop it blowing any of the pattern off, just in case. So we've uh, got five to rinse at once. So we're just going to go over, giving a little bit of a, a little, a soaking. You can see it's warm enough that there's steam coming off, that won't hurt it. And then once we've once we've uh, given it the initial coat, we're going to turn the power up a bit by making it a bit cooler. Because we've got quite a bit more power there now.
Now these are only speed shapes, so it should only take maybe a minute to rinse off. Obviously the bigger items can take quite a while. When we've rinsed them, I think they're ready. If you rub your fingers over slightly, if it feels slimy at all, they're not ready. Same as when it dries, it should dry matte. You see how matte that looks. All right, so it should dry matte. If it's still shiny, it's not done. All right, that one's not done. That one's still got a little bit on, and that one has. I would recommend you leave those to dry on their own overnight. Um, if you're using an aerosol lacquer like Yupol, I would leave them a day before you decide to lacquer them. What can happen due to the amount of thinners in, in certain uh, aerosol based lacquers, um, it can burn the pattern off. So I would leave it a good day so it's well and truly bonded. If you're using a two pack lacquer, obviously if you're using it professor, you know yourself. Um, dry it off, leave it an hour, uh, and then start start lacking it. Will be fine. And um, that's all on the on the topic of rinsing. Right, so after we dipped his item yesterday as the yellow wood, we've left it overnight to dry. Um, we're using an aerosol, U-Pol aerosol, single pack clay coat lacquer. Obviously we wouldn't do this, we'd use a, a two pack lacquer out of a, out of a HVLP gun. But for the purposes of the starter kit and you doing it at home, we use an aerosol lacquer. So check it up, remember wear a mask. We're going to spray from about here and we're going to go across nice and steady with a 50% overlap. So what I mean is, as we spray, we spray on this box, the next spray wants to cover about half of that, so it comes here as, as such. You can get u pop cans as well with a wider spray pan uh, if you get the option of changing the lid. If you do have that option, change for the wider lid. So first coat is just going to be nice and fast. Again, remember not to tip too far. We don't want too much or it'll start running. So what we're going to do now is we're going to leave that for about about 10 minutes to, to practically dry for the first cut. Um, and then we'll come back and put on two heavier coats um, before we leave it to dry overnight.
We've left it for 10 minutes, come back, it's practically dry. Uh, if you touch it, it'll be ever so slightly sticky, that's so how you know it's practically dry. And go with the second coat, it's going to be the same again, but a bit a bit slower, so we get more on. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bits that the can might and that I've got, like obviously the back edge, maybe the front edge. So I'm just going to quickly go over that. And if you get nice and close up to that, you can see it's it's quite wet. It's quite quite shiny. Again, leave it for 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, it should be going off quite quite sticky. Um, if you were to touch it, you'd leave a fingerprint in it. So try and touch it somewhere that's not going to matter too much, maybe like the, the front bit. Uh, and then we'll do the same again, and then it'll be done. All right, so that's one of last coat. Same again as we've just done. Nice, heavy, final coat. Um, obviously, once I've done it, I'll explain. Get close up on that. So that's it, we've applied all those lacquer, don't need to apply any more lacquer now. You can leave that to dry um, overnight. You could essentially leave it under a warm lamp and it'll dry in about, about 30 minutes obviously. Don't get too close because you'll burn it. Um, other than that, once it's dry, it's done, you can put your part back in, uh, whatever you've taken it off and, and start using it. Bear in mind that lacquer does take and can take up to a month before it goes absolutely rock solid, before it becomes a bit more scratch resistant. Um, if you need to sand it down and polish it, obviously that's something you can do, but I'd suggest you wait three or four days um, until it's gone gone off quite a bit. Um, that's it. I say if you need any help, just give us a have a look us up or give us a call. Thank you.